She waits with serene patience for the arrival of the new day while she slowly mixes the ingredients. She has to prepare a loaf of bread, one for her little family and several more to sell at the Abbey Market that Sunday. It will be a hot day, she thinks herself. There will be more people than usual because the Easter holidays are approaching and people usually move from one town to another to do business. The woman does her work calmly. She is not in a hurry. The morning has barely begun and many are still sleeping. Despite the little light that filters through the windows, she does not dare to light a candle. Lately, they have been scarce due to the situation in the region and she prefers to strain her tired eyes rather than burn reserves. She is submerged in her thoughts. She works absorbed, almost mechanically. I have to spin a new blanket, she thinks to herself in dismay. It is an expense that she cannot afford, but there is no other choice. When will I tell him? When will I have the courage? And as if invoked by a supernatural force, her husband appears in the doorway, putting on his worn-out sandals and scaring away the demons of the drain. What's up, woman? He asks like every morning, but without waiting for an answer. She just smiles wistfully. I must tell him now. He must know at once, although he won't be very happy. Six is already too many mouths. The neighbor says that one must accept with resignation the divine designs. Well, yes, but who is going to fit this new divine design? And she smiles at the very thought of it. It has arrived! The clear, high-pitched voice of a boy is heard shouting down the street. Husband and wife look at each other. At the moment, they don't understand. It has arrived at the village. It has settled in for houses. It looks like an owl song predicting death. The wife notices how her eyes water. The husband feels his breath catch. Her hands shake uncontrollably as he gets to work. Either way, he had already prepared himself for this moment. With great speed, he closes the windows of the entire house. He picks up the boards by the windows, the rough nails and the mallet. He frantically nails the boards to board up the windows as if he could prevent the enemy from entering. Help me, woman! She appears to snap out of her reverie and runs to his aid. The wife holds the logs. He nails them to the wall of moth, eaten in semi-rotten wood. With such a noise, the six children have woken up and run to the room that serves as kitchen and dining room to see what happens. They are only twelve, eight, seven, six, three and two years old. They are so small, thinks the woman, my children. The husband strives to close the door and windows. She helps him. The children watch undaunted, oblivious to anything but a breakfast of watery broth and homemade bread. Husband and wife will never know that it will not be through doors and windows through which it will enter. It will do it stealthily, without anyone noticing or realizing it. It will do it at night as well as during the day, and it will ride on a convenient transport with four legs and a long tail. It will enter the house without any of the eight members being able to avoid it, without any of them surviving its insane attack of black death. And I will never be able to tell him that son number seven is on the way, the woman thinks. I never will. <laughs>